Hi and welcome to a new video. I'm Anne and I'm a full-time artist and best-selling author living in LA. In this video, I'm going to go over 10 pieces of advice I would give a young artist. And by young artist, I don't mean by age. I'm talking about where you are in your journey. This advice is especially meant for artists who want to make a career out of being an artist. Why am I giving advice? Well, I've been working in the industry for over 10 years with clients such as Disney, Facebook, Adobe, Mattel, Jenny Splendid Ice Creams, The New York Times, and so many more. I've also written and illustrated four books published by Chronicle Books and released a global Disney by Anne Shen home product collaboration. And I want to give back by sharing my art process and life as an artist here. So if you're interested in that, please like, subscribe, and chat with me in the comments. Since I'm filming this in October, the official start of spooky season, I decided to paint a pink witch that's going to be one of my Drawloween pieces. If you're not familiar with Drawloween, you may know that there are plenty of art prompt challenges for October. And artist Mab Graves runs one called Mab's Drawloween Club that I like to partake in each year. There are daily prompts and I try to participate as much as I can because I really enjoy the community around it. This pink witch was also partially inspired by Keiko Lin on Instagram. She has a really cute pink witch hat tutorial that I really want to make one year, but my sewing machine just broke, so this year I'm just going to paint it instead. So on to the 10 pieces of advice I would give to young artists if I were starting out now. Number one, make a lot of work. Take on a challenge to make art daily or as frequently as you can. Give yourself a monthly challenge and make art for 30 days in a row. See if you can stretch it to 365 days and do it for a year. Commit to a studio practice where you either sit down every day for a set amount of time so that you can actually make it a habit because the work you do every day makes up the work that makes up your life. You want to make a lot of work because when you're starting out, your skill level is not going to be at the level you need it to be to work professionally yet. And you can tell. And that's why you get frustrated and discouraged. And the only thing that you can do is work through that by making a lot of work. Number two, build a community for yourself. Start social media accounts like Instagram and Pinterest. And not only is it important to share your progress there, it's going to be great to build a community there. Don't view it as competition and get overwhelmed. It's a place to find like-minded people, especially if you don't have a community where you are already, um, who are going to support your work, cheer you on, and grow with you. Look to artists who are just starting out or are kind of where you are too to build that community because you don't want to compare your beginning to someone else's middle. That'll help you get really discouraged real fast and help uplift others by sharing their artwork, commenting, liking, and be the kind of person that you want supporting you on social media. Number three, let your taste guide your work. To summarize a really great quote from Ira Glass, when you're starting out, your taste is going to be better than your skill level. And that's why you're not going to be happy with your work because you have really great taste and that's why you started doing this in the first place. The only thing you can do is to keep practicing, keep paying attention to the things that you like and why you like them, get really analytical and study them. And then it's only through creating a large volume of work that you're going to close that gap between your taste and and your skill level. And this is going to take years and years and years, and maybe something that you work on for the rest of your life. This is incredibly normal. I am still working on getting my work to the level of my taste or to a place where I'm happy with. And it sometimes I get glimmers of it now, like way over 10 years into making art professionally. And I make art almost every single day when I can. Obviously, I have times where I take vacations or breaks, but I have a studio practice that I commit to and I make art all the time, whether professionally for clients or for myself, if I'm not making work for clients or for proposals for future projects. And that is just part of my studio practice. Um, and hopefully in 50 more years, I'm going to be happy with it. So number four, do great work and be great to work with. The bar for professional artists is actually not that high. I learned this when I was working in-house at Mattel, um, and I worked with a lot of freelancers that I hired, and over half of them wouldn't turn things in on time, and I'd have to chase them down. 
don't be that artist because I will keep hiring and working with the artists who turn things in on time and are great at communication. These are two things that don't actually require a lot of your technical skill or practice, but do require you to actually be a good communicator and responsive and get out of your own head and understand that we live in a world in a community where our directors want to help you. They hired you because they believe that you can help them succeed. So you can easily achieve the second part, be great to work with, and then doing great work is the advice I already gave you, which is make a lot of work, practice a lot. Do Even if you are happy with the level your work is at, there's always something else you can be improving on, and that just makes you even more valuable as an artist. Number five, invest in yourself. This means taking the time and money to put towards better materials, um, getting a better iPad that's up to date and doesn't freeze all the time, um, taking classes that you think are going to help you get to where you need to. Don't underestimate the amount of value you can get just from taking a class with someone that you admire. There's so many artists now, like on Skillshare and through their own courses, coaching and teaching classes that can help you really level up to the next level and help you see things that you wouldn't be able to necessarily get through even as much as you work and study or would take you 10 years to do that one class could actually help you make that quantum leap to painting better making better art designing better whatever it is you are worth that investment when you spend that money to take that class or take that coach whatever it is that you're interested in or even just like in better supplies that'll help you make better art it really does make a difference Number six, be your own patron. There's no shame in working a day job until you get to where you want to be. Even after I finished art school, I worked in-house as a designer, as a graphic designer at a couple different places for three years before I became a full-time freelancer and worked for myself. I actually never thought I would work for myself because I really enjoy working with other people. And in these jobs, I learned so much on the job So it was like going to grad school for design while getting paid for it. Like I learned, I worked as a print designer and I went and did press checks and worked with printers and that helped me so much in my art. I worked at Mattel as a packaging designer and I learned so much about working with overseas factories, with freelancers on teams and how internally everyone is viewing um, freelancers. And that really gave me so much valuable information. But even if you aren't doing a design or art related job yet. I worked um, full time in nonprofits, which was totally unrelated to design before I went back to school for art. And I took art classes on the side on weekends and at night. And that made it so that I had the freedom to actually invest in myself and go back to school, invest in my own materials and not have to rely on every single little job to come in. I was not stressed about money in that way, which is really important to take that out of your journey as an artist. Um, It's really hard to make work when you're really stressed about money. Being poor is really expensive. Doing whatever you have to do so that you can support your own goals and your own dreams is incredible. Number seven, write down your goals every night. Practice the art of manifestation. So when I was in art school, I had a business teacher actually tell us to write down our goals every night before bed, like physically write them down in a journal. There's just something about writing it with your hand that makes it more magic. And then when you're sleeping, your subconscious works on ways that to make these dreams come true. And that's when you get those little pings from the universe throughout the day that may seem random, but then lead to more and more amazing things. Like maybe suddenly you'll think, oh, I haven't been in touch with that person for a while. Maybe I'll check in with them. Or, oh, maybe I'm going to go to the art store today and get something. And that's when you run into someone you haven't worked with in a long time. And then they give you a job. Like you never know what can happen. So you got to tell the universe your dreams. The way you make them real is by writing them down. I also can't tell you how many of the goals, like every goal I wrote down um, came true maybe not in the time I would have liked it to, but it eventually came true. And then it's gone beyond my wildest dreams now. So you really have to start making those goals for yourself, no matter how crazy audacious they are. Okay. Number eight, surround yourself with people who support your dreams, share your name in a room where it matters 
and do the same for others. So on the journey to becoming an artist and pursuing your dreams, you're going to lose a lot of friends along the way because they don't understand or see your vision. And that's okay because there are people who come into your life for a season and then there are people who are meant to be there with you for all of it. And you have to make room for that because there just isn't enough room in our lives for every single person we've ever had a meaningful relationship with. And that's okay. So you really want to make sure you're spending time with people who believe in your dreams, who support you every single step of the way, um, and who believe in you because it's going to be hard and you're going to need these people who believe in you in times you don't. Number nine, learn to love the questions themselves, which is a quote from Rainer Mario Rilke. Um, You want to uh, follow your passions and your curiosities. That's going to lead you to making the special sauce of who you are as an artist. Um, If you really admire just one artist, that artist already exists in this world. We need you to be you. And so follow your passions, your curiosities. If you're curious about something, start by looking and researching and going down that rabbit hole. Look up a TED Talk, a podcast, a book. Do research on it. And these, the things that are special and unique to you are what's going to Make your voice and your style unique to you. And then number 10, do your research. Do you want to learn how to make better videos since short form is king right now? There are so many reels and TikToks out there that will teach you how to make better videos or how to make videos that really succeed in your niche. And there's never been a better time to be working as an independent artist because we have so much accessibility and freedom to put ourselves out there as artists and there are no more gatekeepers in terms of waiting for someone to say yes to us. So if you're curious about something, you can figure out how to learn it now. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.